Hi everyone, it's Professor Permington. In this video, we're going to talk about derivatives of exponential functions. So in the previous video, we talked about a review of exponential functions, and we also talked about compound interest and continuous compound interest. In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the derivative of exponential and the natural exponential functions, and also be able to use exponential functions and applications involving business, economics, social, and physical sciences. So let's pick up where we left off in the previous video. We're going to talk about derivatives of exponential functions. In order to find the derivative of an exponential function with a base e, the natural exponential function, we need to explore and discuss the value of this limit. The limit as h approaches 0, e, so base e, raised to the h power, subtract 1, and then all divided by h. What is the value of this limit? This is going to be very helpful when we actually derive what the derivative of an exponential function is. So the following table is used to find out what the value of that limit is. So it's involving the natural exponential function, and we're going to round all the values to four decimal places. So if you make a table of values with negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, so we're getting closer and closer to 0 from the left side of x equals 0, and you also use 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001, so you're approaching 0 from the right side of x equals 0 as well, the y values look like they're approaching 1 from either side of x equals 0. So the y values are 0 0.9516, and then you're a little bit closer to 1, 0 0.9950, and then again, closer to 1, 0 0.9995, as you approach x equals 0 from the left side, and from the right side, you have 1.0517, 1.0050, and then 1.0005. So it looks like the y values are also approaching a y value of 1 when the x values are approaching 0 from the right side. So you can see from the table of values that it's very reasonable to conclude that the limit as h approaches 0 of this expression, e to the h, subtract 1, all divided by h, the y values are approaching 1, or the function values are approaching 1. So we're going to use this fact, along with the definition of the derivative using limits, to find the derivative of the natural exponential function, which is f of x equals e to the x. So remind ourselves what the definition of a derivative is using limits. The derivative is f prime of x, in this case, for the function f of x. It's the limit, as h approaches 0, of the difference quotient, or slope of the secant line. f of x plus h, subtract f of x, and all divided by h. So if your function is f of x equals e to the x, one thing to notice is that you cannot use the power rule to take the derivative. The base is a number, the variable is the exponent. With a power function, the power rule says the base is the variable and the exponent is the number. So you cannot take the derivative using the power rule this way. The derivative of exponential functions do not turn out to be take the power to the front, which is a variable, keep the base e, which is a number, and then subtract 1 from the power. That's not the correct derivative. To find out the correct derivative of f of x equals e to the x, we're going to find out what is the definition of the derivative tell us. f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. f of x plus h, that means you take all the x's from your function and replace them with x plus h. Well, the x is in the exponent. So this will be base e to the x plus h in the exponent. Then you subtract the original function, which was e to the x. So subtract e to the x, and then you're all divided by h. So now you need to figure out how to simplify. Notice that e to the x plus h, you have an addition problem or a sum in the exponent. Remember, exponent rules say you add exponents whenever you're multiplying exponential expressions with the same base. So this is really just disguised multiplication. It's e to the x times e to the h. So you have e to the x times e to the h. Subtract e to the x was the original function, all divided by h. And you still have the limit as h approaches 0. So e to the x can be factored out from the first term, and e to the x can be factored out from the second term. And so you have e to the x times e to the h left over from the first term. Subtract 1, because you factor out e to the x from itself. And this is all divided by h. So now you can see why we wanted to talk about that limit earlier. You have e to the h, subtract 1, and it's all divided by h. But there's a couple more steps we need to do. The derivative is the limit as h approaches 0. Notice that you want to separate the e to the h, subtract 1, divided by h, so that we can focus on it as a limit later. e to the x divided by 1 is one fraction, and the other fraction is the one we're interested in finding the limit of. e to the h, subtract 1, all divided by h. And now you can use a limit property that says if you're multiplying two functions together, you can take the limit of each one separately. So the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the x times the limit of the other fraction. Limit as h approaches 0 of e to the h, subtract 1, divided by h. 
And so notice that the h is approaching zero. There's no h to plug in. So e to the x just stays e to the x. And the limit as h approaches zero of e to the h subtract one divided by h. We found out that value using a table of values earlier. The value is one. And so e to the x times one just gives you e to the x. So all this work shows that if your function is the natural exponential function, f of x equals e to the x, the derivative f prime of x is e to the x. So in other words, the derivative of the natural exponential function, e to the x, is itself. So what we just found out is that the derivative of the natural exponential function, the derivative of the natural exponential function is the derivative with respect to x of e to the x, so the natural exponential expression, is itself e to the x. So now we're going to be able to find out what is the derivatives of functions that contain one or more terms that include an exponential function. So example five, finding derivatives of exponential functions. Find the derivative of the following functions. Part one, f of x is equal to the function five times e to the x, so that's already an exponential expression. Subtract 12x cubed, that's a power function, plus 8x squared, another power function, plus 9x, same, and subtract 16 is just a constant. So the derivative f prime of x is the derivative d dx, so the derivative with respect to x of this function. So five is a constant, you keep it, but then you wanna take the derivative of e to the x, so derivative with respect to x of e to the x, and then the derivative of all the other terms. Subtract, keep the constant 12, and then you have the derivative of x cubed, that's the power rule. The derivative is three x squared, plus eight is a coefficient or a constant, so you keep it, times a function, and then you have derivative of x squared, that is 2x. And then the derivative of 9x is just 9, and the derivative of 16 is just the derivative of a real number, a constant, it's zero. And so now to simplify, we still need to find out what the derivative of e to the x is. The derivative of e to the x is itself. So five times e to the x is the derivative. Subtract, 12 times three gives you 36x squared, plus 16x, and then plus nine. So that's the derivative of f of x. So number two, g of x is equal to the function negative seven times e to the x, so exponential function here, plus four x to the e, subtract e cubed. So the one thing you notice in this function is that there's e everywhere. There's a base e, there's an e and an exponent, then there's a base e with a number in the exponent and not a variable. So g prime of x is the derivative, so derivative with respect to x of the original function, so again, negative seven is a coefficient, you keep it, you take the derivative of e to the x. So derivative d dx, e to the x, but then you wanna take the derivative of the next term, so plus four, derivative of x to the e, so d dx, x to the e power, and then derivative d dx of the last term, which was negative e cubed. So let's take the derivative of each term. The derivative of e to the x is itself, so e to the x, so negative seven, e to the x, plus four stays. So now what's the derivative of x to the e? This is a power function. You have a base that's the variable. The exponent is a number. So how do you use the power rule? You take the exponent, which is e in this case, and you bring it down and make it a coefficient. So four times e. You keep the x and you subtract one from the exponent. So x to the e minus one. And now the derivative of the last term. Remember that e is just a number. So you're taking a number and cubing that number. So it's e times e times e, and then just a negative sign. That's just a real number. That's just a constant. So the derivative of a constant we know is zero. So the derivative of an exponential function is where you have the derivative of a base that is a number and the variable is the exponent. The derivative of a power function will be you have the base is a variable and the exponent is a number. And then you also have the constant function where you have just a real number. So be very careful on what rule you're actually applying because it's very easy to use the power rule with exponential functions incorrectly or using exponential function derivative when you have a power function instead. All right, number three, y equals three times the square root of t, so the variable this time is t, subtract four divided by t to the fourth plus five times e to the t. So notice that last term is an exponential expression because base is the number e and the variable is t in the exponent. So we know we need to rewrite this function because we have radicals and we also have a power of t in the denominator. So rewrite this, we know that the square root of t is t to the one half power, so three times t to the half, 
subtract 4. And if we have t to the 4th in the denominator, you move the t to the 4th to the numerator to make it negative 4t to the negative 4 power. And then that last term is perfectly fine. 5e to the t power. So now take the derivative. The derivative would be y prime or dy dx using Leibniz notation is the derivative of this function, the original function. The first term is a power function. You have a constant times t to a power. So three stays as the coefficient. The derivative of t to the half, use the power rule. Half comes down to make it a coefficient, and then you subtract one from the power. So it'd be one half subtract one in the exponent. Now the next term, you have negative four. That's a coefficient, so you keep it. t to the negative four is a power function. So the derivative of t to the negative four, use the power rule. Negative four comes down, makes it a coefficient. So you have negative four times negative four, and then you subtract one from the exponent. So t to negative 4 subtract 1. And now the derivative of the last term. The last term is an exponential expression. So you keep the coefficient 5. And the derivative of e to the t is e to the t when you're taking the derivative with respect to t. And so now we just need to simplify. 3 times a half is 3 halves. t to the negative half power plus 16. Negative 4 times negative 4. And you have t to negative 5 power. And then 5 e to the t. So y prime is 3 halves t to negative half plus 16t to negative 5, plus 5 times e to the t. Now we need to actually talk about how to find the derivative of general exponential functions. So keep in mind that exponential functions may be written in this form. y equals b base b to the x power. The only conditions on the base is that the base must be a positive number, so b must be greater than 0, but b cannot be 1, because if you have 1 to the x, that's just 1. So to find the derivative of an exponential function of this form, we need to use a different formula. So here's the definition for the derivative of exponential functions in general. For the base b greater than zero, but the base is not one, that's in the definition of exponential functions, the derivative of an exponential function of the form y equals b raised to the x power is d dx for the derivative of b to the x. Now notice this is an exponential expression. b is a number, that's greater than zero, but not one. So the base is a number. The variable is the exponent. So exponential expression. The derivative of this exponential expression is itself, just like what we had earlier with the derivative of e to the x was e to the x. So the derivative of b to the x power is b to the x power, but there's an extra part this time. It's also multiplied by the natural log, so ln, of b. And b was representing the base of the exponential function. Now remember, I said that this was for general exponential functions. This rule actually works for taking the derivative of e to the x also. So since the natural exponential function is of this form, y equals b to the x, where b is equal to e, you can also use the formula here to actually verify that the derivative of e to the x is itself. So let's do that. Let's say the function is f of x equals e to the x, the natural exponential function. The base b is the number e. And just to make sure it satisfies the conditions, e is a positive number. It's 2.71828 and so on. And b is not 1. So the derivative says you take the derivative of e to the x. The rule says it stays exactly the same, e to the x. But then you have to multiply by natural log ln of the base, which was e. So you have e to the x times natural log of e. Well, remember. Natural log means log base e, so this is log base e of e, and there's a logarithm property that says if you're taking a logarithm of a number where the base is exactly the same, it's 1, because e to the first power is e. So this means that you can use this formula for any exponential function, including with the base e. So example 6, finding derivatives with the base b not equal to e. Find the derivative of the following functions. Part 1, f of x equals 2 raised to the x, so that's an exponential expression. 5 e to the x, that's also an exponential expression, and you're adding those two together. So the derivative, f prime of x, is equal to the derivative, d dx, of the sum of these two exponential expressions. The derivative of 2 to the x, that's an exponential expression, so the derivative of 2 to the x is 2 to the x. But then using the formula that we had earlier, you have to multiply by natural log of the base, which was 2. So 2 to the x times natural log of 2. Now for the same reason, 
5 raised to the x, that's also an exponential expression. So the derivative of 5 to the x would be 5 to the x times the natural log of its base. And the base of this exponential expression was 5, so times natural log of 5. And so this is the answer. You cannot simplify any further. Remember that you can only add like terms, and you can only multiply if you have the same base. And so these bases are different, so you can't do anything with 2 to the x and 5 to the x. All right, number 2. g of x is equal to x cubed subtract 3 to the x. So notice that 3 to the x is an exponential expression or an exponential function, but x cubed isn't. x cubed is a power function. So to take the derivative, we're going to separate these out. g prime of x is equal to the derivative, so d dx, of this x cubed subtract 3 to the x. It means take the derivative of the first term, so take the derivative with respect to x of x cubed, and then also take the derivative with respect to x of 3 to the x. So we're going to use two different rules because they're two different types of functions x cubed is a power function. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. You take the power, make it a coefficient, so 3. Subtract 1 from the power, so you have x to the second power. Subtract, so keep the sign between the terms. The derivative of 3 to the x is 3 to the x itself times natural log of the base of the exponential expression, which was 3, so times natural log of 3. And so again, this is the answer that's simplified because there's nothing you can do to combine. So now that we have a rule to actually take the derivative of any exponential function, we can actually talk about exponential models. So recall that the derivative means it's interpreted as a rate of change, an instantaneous rate of change. We're going to need to find the derivative of an exponential function in order to determine the rate of depreciation in a car's value, or you can find the instantaneous rate of change in the balance of an account using continuous compound interest. So example seven, resale value. Suppose that the estimated resale value, capital R, in dollars, of a company car after t years is given as this function. R of t is equal to 20,000 times 0 0.86 raised to the t power. Notice that this is an exponential function because you have 0.86 is the base and it's raised to the t power and t is the variable. So one thing I want to remind you when you do calculations with exponential functions involving a constant you cannot multiply these, 20,000 and 0 0.86. 20,000 is the constant, the coefficient. The 0.86 is with the base of the exponential expression. So with order of operations, you need to do the exponent first and then take that answer and multiply by 20,000. So there's no way you combine these. So the question is, what is the rate of depreciation per year? So it's talking about a rate of change and interpret the result after one year, two years, and five years. Round each of your answers to the nearest cent. So we're talking about a rate of depreciation. That means we need to find the derivative of this resale value function, r of t. And we've already talked about that it's an exponential function. So if we want to find the derivative, we need to use the formula that we talked about earlier. So the derivative, r prime of t, is the derivative with respect to t, so d dt, of this function, 20,000 times 0 0.86 raised to the t power. So since the base is an e, when you use the formula, it's 20,000 is the coefficient, you keep it. You take the derivative of the exponential expression. So the derivative of 0 0.86 to the t power is itself, 0 0.86 to the t power. But then you also have to remember, this was not base e. So you have to multiply by natural log of the base. So natural log of 0 0.86. And so this is simplified. There's nothing you can do to simplify any further. The derivative is 20,000 times natural log of 0 0.86 times 0 0.86 to the t power. So let's find out and interpret what the answers mean for the rate of depreciation after one year and then two years and then five years. The rate of depreciation after one year would be the derivative evaluated at one. So 20,000 times natural log of 0 0.86 times 0 0.86 to the first power. Let's see what this is equal to. So with the graphing calculator, you have 20,000 times natural log of 0 0.86, close the parenthesis on the natural log, and then times 0 0.86 raised to the first power. So this is approximately negative $2,594 and round to the nearest cent, so two decimal places, 15 cents. So what that means is that after one year, the rate of depreciation of the company car is $2,594.15 lost in value per year. All right, let's find out what the rate of depreciation would be after two years. So R prime of two is 20,000 times natural log of 0 0.86 times 0 0.86 to the second power. 
So again, if you want the last thing that you typed in the graphing calculator, hit second and then hit enter. All that we need to change is the exponent, which was t. Now it's 2. So now the rate of depreciation is negative $2,230.97 per year after two years. And then after five years, second enter, change the exponent to a 5. So r prime of 5 would be negative $1,419.02 per year. So after five years, the rate of depreciation in the company's car would be that amount. So let's finish up this video with the last example that we're going to talk about continuous compound interest as we did in the previous video. So in the following example, we're going to find what's called the instantaneous rate of change derivative in the balance of an account that earns interest compounded continuously. So example eight, continuous compound interest and the rate of change. An investment of $1,000 earns interest at an annual rate of 4% compounded continuously. Find the instantaneous rate of change of the amount in the account after two years. So how fast is the account growing exactly at two years? So since interest is compounded continuously, we need to use the continuous compound interest formula, which was A equals P was the principal times E, the base E, to the RT exponent. The R was the interest rate. So T was the amount the money was in the account after T years, and the A was the accumulated balance or the future value. So in this problem, we have an investment of $1,000. So that's the present value or the principal. The interest rate is R, 4%. So 4% divided by 100 would be 0 0.04. And the time that we're interested in is two years. So when we plug in the information into this formula, we have A is equal to 1,000 is the P, E to the 0 0.04. Now keep T exactly as it is. T is changing. We want to find out how fast the function is changing as a function of time. So keep the t as the variable, and the function's name is a. So notice that this is an exponential function. You have base e to the 0 0.04 times t, and t is the variable, and it's in the exponent. So to take the derivative, you keep the coefficient 1,000. Then you take the derivative of the exponential function. So derivative with respect to t, so d dt of e to the 0 0.04 t. So this is an exponential function. We can take the derivative using the formula. You have 1,000 times the derivative of e to the 0.04t is itself. It's e to the 0.04t. We know we need to multiply by the natural log of the base. So natural log of the base was e, so natural log of e. But then there's something new this time. Notice that the exponent isn't just t, it's a number times t. So you also have to take the derivative of the exponent. So you also have the derivative of the exponent, which would be derivative of 0.04t is 0.04. And so now simplify the derivative. You have a prime is equal to 1,000 times e to the 0.04t. The natural log of e is 1, and then you have 0.04. All this is multiplied together. So 1,000 times 0.04 is 40. So 40e to the 0.04t. So that's the derivative of a prime. We can find out how fast the amount in the account is changing exactly at two years because we have the derivative now. So after two years, the instantaneous rate of change is a prime, 40e to the 0 0.04, now replace t with two years because we're interested in finding what's the change exactly at two years. And so if you approximate this, you'll have 40 times e, so second and then the division button to get e, raised to the 0 0.04 times two in the exponent. And so you'll have 43.33. So what that means is that the rate of change in the account balance is $43.33, so make sure you round the two decimal places, per year. So exactly at two years, how fast is the account growing? It's growing at a rate of $43.33 accumulated every year. So this finishes our video on derivatives of exponential functions. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about a review of logarithm functions.